Happy birthday, darling Mike had just opened his eyes from a deep sleep and, as he gradually became accustomed to the light in the room, he saw Sophie, his wife of twenty years, standing by him with two mugs of coffee, one of which she put on his bedside table before walking round to her side of the bed and sliding back under the covers once more. So, old man, she giggled, what would you like to do today? Old man? It was only his fortieth birthday and he still had half of his life ahead of him. I'm going to ignore that comment, he said with mock indignation before adding, perhaps we could go out for an early dinner and then see a show. The new one in town has had good reviews. Great minds think alike, laughed Sophie handing him an envelope from which Mike removed two tickets to the very show he just expressed an interest in. But that's hours away, she continued as she moved closer to Mike, and I'm not in any hurry to get up. Mike turned round to face her and then noticed a large parcel, neatly wrapped with a bow on top, on Sophie's bedside table. Air, is that for me? Oh yes, I almost forgot. This year, I wanted to get you something a little bit different and give you a day you'll never forget. I hope you like it. Mike was never one for carefully opening presents and within a few seconds, he was surrounded by shreds of wrapping paper. Lou Bouton, Mike read on the front of the box, I didn't know he made men's shoes. Oh, these are definitely shoes for a man, giggled Sophie with only a hint of nervousness in her voice. Mike opened the box and removed the shoes. The red soles left no doubt as to their provenance but, unless he was missing something, for inch stiletto heels were definitely not found on any of the shoes he'd ever seen in the men's department. I don't understand, stammered Mike. What do you mean by this? These aren't shoes for me. They're for you, aren't they? Look at the size. I think they're going to be a bit big for my feet. Mike looked at the side of the box which confirmed Sophie's remark. The shoes definitely were too big for her but exactly matched the size of all of Mike's shoes. Now Mike was starting to become irritated. What on earth makes you think that these would be an appropriate present for me? He snapped. Do you think I'm some form of pervert? Of course not, replied Sophie who had now become serious, and if you don't want them, I'll take them back for a full refund. But there's one condition, you have to try them on first no way, said Mike. If you think I'd get some form of pleasure out of these, you're very much mistaken. On the contrary, said Sophie, I think you're going to get more pleasure than you ever thought possible. I think you're going to find out things about yourself that you never imagined. I think these shoes may just change your life. But, I suppose, what you've never had, you never miss so I'll repeat my offer to take them back for a refund, as long as you try them on first. Mike thought for a few minutes. The shoes had obviously cost several hundred pounds and, whilst they were financially well off, he still didn't like to think of money being wasted in that way. Taking them back for a refund, in his view, was a no-brainer but, even so, he was intrigued by Sophie's last comment. Okay, you win, he started, I'll try them on but I now have a condition too. Before I try them, I want to know why you bought them and what you meant by your last comments it's a deal, replied Sophie, kissing Mike tenderly on the lips. So, she started, have you ever cross-dressed? What do you mean? Have you ever worn women's clothing? No, Mike replied emphatically before reconsidering his answer. Well apart from Freshers Week at university when we put on skirts and stuck balloons down our t-shirts to collect money for charity. I bet you looked quite the girl about town, laughed Sophie, but that's not what I had in mind. Well, in that case, definitely not, replied Mike. Okay then, have you ever wanted to? or even just thought about, cross-dressing? No again, replied Mike although a little less convincingly this time round. Sophie said nothing and just looked at Mike for a few moments. Mike started to blush. Ah, oh, I thought so. Now we're getting somewhere. No, we're getting nowhere fast with this conversation. I've had enough. And with that, Mike got out of bed and, putting on his dressing gown as he went, left the room and went downstairs. Sophie just laughed to herself and decided to leave Mike to cool off for a while. 
Half an hour later, Sophie entered the kitchen. Look, started Mike, I'm sorry I stormed out like that but this is all getting stupid. All I wanted was a nice quiet birthday with the woman I love and instead, you buy me a completely inappropriate present and play games with my emotions. Why? Okay, no more games but hear me out. I'm listening. Sophie put the shoes on the kitchen table. So what do you think of these shoes? What would you say if I bought them for myself, not for you? Mike thought for a moment. Honestly, I think they're absolutely gorgeous. Everything about them is just perfect and, whilst I may have been shocked at the price, as soon as you put them on, I'd know they were worth every penny. I just wish you bought them for yourself. Oh, don't worry. I bought myself a pair too, there's no way I was going to let you have all the fun. Anyway, we're getting off the point. Let me ask you another question. If you weren't married to me, which of my friends would you like to ask out on a date? Oh, that's easy. Sion, replied Mike perhaps a little too enthusiastically. I thought so, laughed Sophie, but why? Mike realized that the opportunities to dig himself into a hole with his answer to this question were significant so he thought carefully before replying. Well, we both know she's very attractive and she's just easy to talk to. Okay, so why did you make a beeline for Lucy when we all got together a few weeks ago? Lucy is quiet and not always easy to talk to and is very plain looking. In fact, the only remarkable thing about her that night was the fact that she was wearing a pair of Louboutins just like these. Was she? I didn't notice. Oh, I think you did notice, replied Sophie, because every time I looked at you, you seemed to be taking sly glances at her feet. Mike started to feel uncomfortable again. Sophie realized and held his hand. First of all, I don't see anything wrong if a guy wants to explore his feminine side from time to time. I mean, if I'm feeling a little less feminine than usual, I can just put on a pair of jeans, a loose shirt and leave the makeup off and you're none the wiser. You mean you don't like being a woman? Quizzed Mike, now even more confused. No, I absolutely love being a woman. But I have a choice and men don't. That's true, nodded Mike. But why are you saying this? Taking a little too much interest in one of your friend's footwear doesn't mean that I'm some form of closet tranny. No, of course it doesn't, laughed Sophie, but it started me thinking about all of the times we've been shopping together and you've practically begged me to buy shoes which are inappropriate for almost everything other than looking at and admiring. And it started me thinking about the times we've watched documentaries together and you've just watched in silence when, for any other program, you'd have been giving your opinion. And then I thought about the times I've gone to my wardrobe and seen things out of place I have never worn any of your clothes, declared Mike. Don't worry, I believe you, replied Sophie, and, if I'm honest, I still don't know whether I'm right or wrong about you but I just want to give you the chance to find out who you really are and not just be the person you think I want you to be. Now why don't we go upstairs and try the shoes on? As they walked to the bedroom, Mike thought about what Sophie had said. He knew he'd been well and truly rumbled about Lucy's shoes. Sion had looked nice enough that evening but Lucy had just looked sensational in those shoes and he just couldn't tear himself away from her. And Sophie was right, he had practically begged her to buy inappropriate shoes on occasions shoes which had lain dormant at the back of the wardrobe ever since. And, it was true, he had found the idea of moving between the genders both disconcerting and fascinating. So fascinating that he had, from time to time, removed a dress from Sophie's wardrobe and held it against himself, wondering what it would be like to wear it before replacing it. And finally, as he'd taken so much trouble to put everything back exactly as he found it, how on earth did Sophie know that things were out of place? Sit on the bed, commanded Sophie. Mike complied. She placed the shoes on the floor and told Mike to slip his feet in. Mike tried to put the right shoe on but however hard he tried, his foot would just not go in. There, he exclaimed. They're too small. I knew this was a bad idea. Sophie laughed and reached into the drawer in her bedside table. 
You need to wear these, she said handing Mike a small packet, they'll make it easier for your feet to slide in. Mike looked at the packet which, from the photo on the front, seemed to contain a pair of black sure holdups. Every instinct he had was telling him to call a halt now but a deal was a deal and if he was going to get Sophie to agree to take them back, he had to keep his promise to try them on. So he carefully opened the packet before rolling each up his leg in turn. He then slipped each foot into the shoes in turn, this time without difficulty. Okay, said Sophie standing up and walking towards the door, you've kept your promise but why don't you just go and admire your legs in the mirror? And if you want to go a little bit further when you've seen yourself, take anything you want from my wardrobe. The clothes towards the right are from the days before my diet so are a little bit larger and should just about fit you. I don't want to embarrass you any more than I already have done so I'll leave you alone. Just come down when you've finished and we can take the shoes back. About 30 minutes later, Sophie heard Mike coming down the stairs. She noticed that he seemed to be coming down slower than he normally won but quickly realized why when she heard the characteristic click-clack of high heels on the hard hall floor. So, what do you think? Do I make a good woman? Sophie scanned her now feminized husband standing in front of her. The red dress he had selected was simple, yet feminine, hanging just above the knee and the boobs which Mike seemed to have spontaneously sprouted filled out the top of the dress nicely. The black holdups and stilettos had given his legs a decidedly female silhouette and, with a few bracelets and a necklace from her jewelry box, her husband now looked every inch the attractive woman. At least from the neck down, anyway. Sophie started to laugh. Mike's face fell. I think you make a lovely woman, said Sophie, but I think your face still needs some work. Shall we get started or do you still want to go and take the shoes back? Well, we may as well finish what we've started and take a photo or two before we do, laughed Mike. And so he and Sophie returned to the bedroom where Sophie sat him down in front of the dressing table mirror and started to apply a layer of foundation followed by a range of cosmetics which slowly reshaped his face into that of a not unattractive woman. Now, turn round and face me, she commanded after about 30 minutes of work. Mike duly complied and Sophie reached up to the back of the top shelf of her wardrobe and removed a box. I always knew I'd need this again, she laughed removing a long, dark blonde wig that had last seen the light of day some ten years earlier for a fancy dress party. She shook the wig and then placed it over Mike's short cropped hair, spending a minute or two arranging it. Finally, she stepped back to admire her handiwork. Finished, she exclaimed. Go to the mirror and take a look. Mike stood up and walked a little unsteadily over to the full-length mirror. He wasn't wearing his glasses and so it was only as he got close to the mirror that things came into focus. He stopped and gasped as he saw himself for the first time. Looking back at him was a woman. An attractive woman. A woman that he'd never met and yet that he felt he somehow recognized. A woman he really wanted to get to know and he looked down at the reflection of the shoes. The shoes that earlier that day had filled him with so much irritation and anger now looked and felt so right. Sophie's words from earlier echoed through his mind. More pleasure than he ever thought possible? Well, the feeling of bliss that was now engulfing his body was better than anything he had ever experienced before so he couldn't argue with that. Find out things about himself that he never imagined? He'd never imagined seeing himself as a woman, never mind enjoying the experience. And as for those shoes changing his life? It was, of course, too early to know what would happen in the future but, for now, he just knew that he wanted to postpone changing back into Mike for as long as he could and certainly not before he'd enjoyed a girl's night out with Sophie at the restaurant and theater later that evening. And as for how Sophie knew things about him that he didn't even know himself, he didn't even try to understand. He just knew that it was part of what made her special and the reason he'd married her in the first place. Yes, as Sophie had promised when she'd handed him the box, this was going to be a day he'd never forget.